Hi there, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Thanks for joining us on TCM, where we're in the middle of a night of Godzilla movies. He's October's Monster of the Month. Up next tonight from 1971, the 11th film in the franchise, so the 10th sequel to the original. This is Godzilla vs. Hedera. Now, before you start writing a letter to the programming department at TCM, the one that begins, Dear Sir or Madam, Godzilla vs. Hedera is no the third man, but let me add, your host, Ben Mankiewicz, is a rare combination of handsome and charming. Let me stop you. We already know these Japanese monster movies or kaiju films are an acquired taste. To enjoy them fully, you have to accept the premise and allow yourself to go with the flow. Critically, these should not be viewed as we see monster movies today, even the recent Godzilla reboots. Rather, these are more like pulp fairy tales. They know there's a fantastical absurdity to them. You can nitpick it, or you can let it envelop you the way Godzilla's feet crush small, fuel-efficient hatchbacks. Specifically, with regard to Godzilla vs. Hedera, the mostly fanatical devotees of the series largely agree this one stands out as one of the wildest, splashiest, most colorful installments in the Godzilla franchise. Make no mistake, the visual effects are from another century, maybe two centuries. This is a couple of guys in rubber monster suits trashing miniature sets. But Godzilla vs. Hedera marked a return to Godzilla's original political roots. When audiences first met the mutant dinosaur in Ishiro Honda's original in 1954, Godzilla was more than merely a monster. He was a metaphor, a living, breathing, destructive reminder of the threat posed by the atomic age, a threat the Japanese understood better than any other people in the world. Seventeen years later, when this film hit theaters, the atomic metaphor had lost much of its meaning, and Godzilla had become a heroic protector of the planet, saving Earth again and again from different, equally menacing alien monsters. However, the new villain here, Hedera, is no alien. He's a smog monster, a toxic manifestation of Japan's industrial growth in the years after World War II. He's a king-sized, shape-shifting lump of sludge with beady red eyes, and he feeds on pollution. From 1971, as part of tonight's Monster of the Month marathon, Godzilla vs. Hedera. This next piece of information I'm about to share with you about Godzilla vs. Hedera is unlikely to surprise you. It was not nominated for even a single Oscar. I know. It was prominently included in a 1977 book called The 50 Worst Movies of All Time. Truth is, even the studio that produced all the Godzilla films was disappointed by Godzilla vs. Hedera. Godzilla had become a kids franchise by this point, and one message movies didn't need to be delivering to kids, even subtly, at least in the studio's opinion, was that pollution is killing us. Because today we know that's just crazy propaganda from 97% of the world's scientists. Coming up, more from our Monster of the Month, Larry Godzilla, and this is another TCM premiere.